Talk. Are you tired of all the noise and speculation in the news? On Hard Fact, we cut through the clutter and get straight to the truth. If only Fubra has been aware of the Bubu trap, he would have understood in democracy there are basis for everybody to do accordingly. Join us as we bring you the stories that matter. We go beyond the headlines to uncover the real facts and the core of every story. We are doing this, we are doing that. At the end of the day, nothing will become up. What did they promise us? They will be in charge of security and life and whatever. But what are we getting here? With in-depth analysis and experts' interviews, Hard Facts delivers the truth that others dare not to reveal. Tune into Hard Facts every weekday, 3 to 6 p.m., and arm yourself with the knowledge you need to navigate today's complex world. Hard Facts, where the truth always prevails. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. It's the nation's number one talk news and sports radio station 99.7. Jerry Info. We're broadcasting live from our audiovisual studios right here at Tamiyan Crescent, Victoria Island, Lagos. I'm Mary Anoko and welcome you to Hard Facts, where we don't say, you know, what we heard people say, but we go with the facts, only the facts. And that's why it is always your most authentic news experience. Welcome to the show, Lagos. I hope that you've had a great day and a great week. Huh? Is it just me or. The month of March has literally just been running in sneakers. I think so, right? Anyway, I don't know about you, but I want it to slow down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Eh? So that eh, we can make some more money before the month is over. You understand me? Welcome to the show. Let's start with the big stories for today. As usual, the big three. We look at the biggest stories that are trending on social media. The ones that you've been talking about, making it number one on the trending list on social media. And of course, the ones that are on the pages of our national dailies. Yes, the biggest stories. And the ones that also are in our bulletins across our stations. These are the stories where we, uh, you know, lift our big three stories from. And today... On the big three, I've got three very interesting stories. Mm. Number one is that Mr. President has banned foreign trips for all (laughs) ministers and other appointees. Second on the big three stories, we've not been able to access Okwama due to ongoing military operations, says Delta State Police. And finally, on the big three stories today, federal government suspends six trillion subsidy on unavailable electricity in 10 years. I've got big questions uh, accompanying these big stories. Let's get the show on the road, Lagos, shall we? There's a reason why over 1 million people tune into Hard Facts every day. We discuss in depth stories with sources behind the facts. The Lagos State High Court has sitting in the Chicago uh, certificate. Stories never going facts, away. We start is it? The show with stories for the day. You hear diverse voices and opinions. I was my commercial magician, and if she was busy, I've been with the husband doing that. You should not feel happy because there is nothing to happy about. Uh, it's quite pathetic the way the country is going. We distinguish each story accurately with analysis. It's Hard Facts with Marianne O'Connor on 99.3 Nigeria Info. we can help each other. The rate we are doing parties and all that going to them, why don't you use the money to help your neighbor until you know we can really get on our feet? So and those are the things we have to look at. And it's not that government has to begin to give food to everybody and asking, tasking. You know, I, I believe in social development and social investment for people who truly need it. You know, and in the Bible they even talked about in the times of Jesus, he said, the poor you will always have in the land. Mm-hmm. So, and it's for people who God has blessed to help the poor. But now you don't even know who are poor. If you don't have, ride a car, they will say they are poor. <laughs> if you don't have a, your own home, they say mm-hmm. they are poor. Even all those people saying they are going to Jakba or, mm-hmm. they go there, what work are you going to do? 
you know, work that you refuse to do at home, where you have loved ones, you end up going to do that. Even with all their education, they're driving cabs. But they won't drive cabs here. Yes. So, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, as lawmakers we want, especially that of the security, I, I want you to really take it to heart and, you know, it's really, really very, very important at this time. Well, those are the words of Her uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mrs. Olura Mitsinubu, speaking there with lawmakers. Um, you should help one another. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, throwing big parties. You should help one another. What are your thoughts? Uh, we will play that again this time around if you're watching us live. We're live facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM. And we're also live on YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. We'll play you the video so you can take a look at Mrs. President, <laughs> if you permit me to do that, Mrs. First Lady, um, and what she had to say about the state of the economy and how we should be living with one another and how we should treat one another. In fact, that we should help one another. Um, that's my leading um, story for today. Are you throwing big parties? Maybe you should stop throwing those parties and use those monies to help one another. And for those of you who are going abroad, ja jack buying abroad, First Lady says, you won't drive an Okada here, or rather you won't drive a cab here, but you'd rather go and drive a cab abroad. Hmm? You are supposed to help one another. <laughs> what do you make of that particular audio or video um, of Miss uh, Madam First Lady addressing Nigerians and the hardships that we're facing, even at, uh, at this point where... Uh, many are celebrating uh, the Ramadan and, you know, we're all fasting. Even the Christians are fasting. There's length also for the Christians. What are your thoughts? But uh, the big story is for today, so we don't forget them. Mr. President bans foreign trips by ministers and other appointees. Now, um, the president has ordered a ban on all foreign trips by ministers and other government officials. Um, Premium Times exclusively is, is reporting this one now. They said the president gave the directive via a letter by his chief of staff, Femi Badabiamila, addressed to the secretary to the government of the federation, George Akumi. Now, in that letter, Mr. President directed an embargo on all foreign trips. However... According to the lecture, exemption could be given to trips deemed absolutely necessary. So what could those trips be? And what, what characterizes or deems a particular trip absolutely necessary? Away from that, uh, we've not been able to access Okwama due to ongoing military operations, says Delta Police. Now, it's just not only the Delta State Police that's unable to access those areas, the media has also not been able to go into that area to um, be able to ascertain the state of things. So it puts, it leaves a lot of question marks around this situation in the Delta. Um, there are too many um, gaps that need to be filled and we cannot fill it if we have reporters, if we have newsmen, if we have journalists who are not allowed to get into the area to be able to tell the story because the I mean, as far as we're concerned, this is only one-sided. It's only what the, the army is telling us that we're going by. What about the community people? Because the army had told us to um, stay away from propaganda. But how can we also tell that it's not your propaganda if we're not able to assess what's on the ground, to be able to make sense of it all and report it from an unbiased position? Don't come for me. But it's a legit ground for questioning. So what exactly is the reason why the army is not letting for the police to go in? Neither is it allowing journalists to get access into these areas to tell, um, you know, the true situation of things. And finally, on the big stories, federal government uh, spends six point six trillion naira, I beg your pardon, um, subsidy on unavailable electricity in 10 years. What's the light situation in your area? When was the last time you got light? Because I've heard that there are places... <laughs> where they've not seen light in months. Now, let me quickly give you a breakdown. In 2015, the subsidy for light or power was 225 billion naira in 2015. In 2016, 308 billion naira is going up. Do you see that? In 2017, 351 billion naira subsidy for power that we didn't see, we barely saw. We were paying all, but we didn't see it. 
I'll tell you the tactics that they use. All the power com- holding companies across the country, they have one particular tactic. They all use it. Correct me if I'm wrong when I tell you what it is. Now, in 2018, it was 440 billion Naira subsidies paid for power. In 2019, 528 billion. It's going up. 2020, 501 billion Naira came down. In 2021, it came down again to 251 billion naira in 2023 645 billion it, co- it combined everything and went up and then so far in 2024 between january and february we paid two trillion naira to subsidize power that we don't have this is an amazing country Anyway, what are your thoughts? 0700 993 993 993. It's a very sweet soup that we have cooked today. Ah, and then, of course, we sprinkled some garnishing with the First Lady's speech on the economic situation in the country. 0700 993 993 993. If you're a lady, call 0201 465 7190. I'm really praying and hoping that the phone lines help us, allow us to have a great conversation. So, Lagos, let's talk. Hello? Hello, Mayang. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from Ekwaiti, Manwe. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, for the first lady, she said good things, you know, but uh, I don't want to disrespect her. I would not have loved the song of Fela who said, teacher, I don't teach me nonsense. You know, because it should start from her. You know, the cash is using is that much. You know, the entourage. All what he's trying to preach, you know, is a cutting of costs. So is he is he leading by I mean is he leading by example? That is for for that for the army. Uh, I, I will appeal to them to water down the rage, you know, because uh, to be honest with you, some of these kind of things, innocent uh, people are going to pay for it. So I will appeal to them to to water down the rage, you know. I mean, I, I allow civility, you know, to 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 take place because uh, it's an uh, uncivilized action of the of the uh, community, you know, that has caused this, and I want them to approach it, you know, with also an uh, uncivilized way. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for calling. I do appreciate it. Hello, welcome to Hard Fact. Hey, this line. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm so sorry. Do. You know what we're going to do? Try and see if you can call the ladies' line because I think that that's a bit clearer. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. What's Good your name? Afternoon. Where are you calling I'm from? Marian. Hi. Fine. Thank you. My name is Peter Osifo. I'm calling from Abanoje. Hi, Kota. Peter. Go ahead, please. Yeah. <clears throat> On the banning of the ministers from traveling abroad for now, at least for the next three months, uh, uh, that one is commendable by the government because it's a way of cutting costs. But let it be said, too, that it should not be as you start, do as I say, but not do as I do. This policy should be well implemented, not just saying it to probably pay to the gallery. I would commend the president, if he actually monitors it to the latter, that no official should travel abroad unnecessarily, because he said, maybe with caveat that it is very necessary they should inform him two weeks before that time, before they can travel. But without that, that no official of the government should travel at least in the next three months. Maybe later, they may even increase it. Thank you for this, for giving the opportunity to talk. All right, thank you very much, uh, Usifu, for calling. Remy is calling us from Akoka. Hello, Remy. Hi, Bia, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Please tell our first lady that the best way to lead, to lead or okay, let's say the best way to convince someone is to lead by example. Mm. As you are, as you only this show, if you keep using the F word, there's no way you will not use it on your own head. So she telling us, trying to gaslight us, doesn't make any. I don't want to use another word to clarify that. It's not convincing enough. So. She's trying to guilt trip the Nigerians, and that has been the trademark of this government. They try to gaslight you to make you think what you are thinking is wrong. If I choose to jack her with my money legitimately, is it wrong? At 1.5 billion naira was budgeted for her own cars. I tell him she never had the car before she got to that office. How about the one she had when she was sending it up for over 12 years? She never rejected that, but money was, was budgeted for her office. So she should spare us those re- uh, rhetorics. Okay. Good afternoon. All right. Thank you, Remy, for calling. Robert is calling us. Hello, Robert. Where are you calling us from? 
Uh, Papa, good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. A time will come uh, that I will stop going to church because uh, what, what do you I mean? Understand is that uh, some of all these our pastors, they will just say one thing on the pulpit and they will do another thing. What did the pastor do to you now? Which pastor is worrying you now? No, our show? first lady is a pastor now, you know. Yeah. Which, and, uh, which parish does she pastor? Which parish is she the pastor? <laughs> come on, stop it. She's the first lady. Um, uh, Miriam. Yes. Do you know that if you drive uh, Kabo Kabo in the UK, you cannot use the money to copy the exchange rate uh, to Nigeria? Is the is our first lady not aware of that? So if you are a banker here and you go there to that Kabu Kabu, dollar and naira, they're not being made now. Madam supposed to know that one. So um, the Okwama issue, mm. the Okwama issue, I don't know why the military are refusing press men. If anything, even if there is war in anywhere, even in Iraq, anywhere in the world, press men must be there. I've seen in CNN where press men wear their uniform and go there to video what is happening. Without press, how will you know what is, is going on in that area? Why will you deny press? The military should not do it. We, do, we, con, we condo with their family. What happened was, was bad. I mean, it was, was very satanic. But then they should not do as if uh, maybe there's something that they are hiding from the public that they don't want the public to know. It is very, very bad. Press men supposed to be no bad. Without press, we will be deformed. We will not know what is happening in this world. Okay. Thank All you right. very much, Mira. Thank you, Robert, for calling. Um, Malik is calling us. Hello, Malik. Where are you calling us from? Marianne, good afternoon. Hi, how are you, Malik? I'm calling from my backyard, Onuru. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Marianne, mm? in the book of Nigerian Holy Book, oh, come on. close one door, leave 330 to steal, and make sure you steal very well. Where did they give us light that are paying subsidy for up to that amount? Yeah. They should call any major area or any village or any community in Nigeria that has 24 hours light. They are paying subsidy of six trillion. You say subsidy is gone for where? You open subsidy for, for power to pack our money. You can see how we don't feel that we are clever. Like my dad said, clever fool. Can you imagine? Six trillion for which power? No, no, no. For for for, for January to February this year, two trillion, not six. For January to February. Yes, I'm but a, the whole of twenty twenty three it was six point something billion. Right or wrong? Uh-huh. For how many days? Hmm. For how many days? How many factories are shut down that they, they, there's no power? How many small scale businesses working without power that they are paying something of two trillion? Why don't you use that money and open factory company and tire company for Nigerians? Big question. Why did the government do that? Big question, Malik. Two trillion. We come to be fooling ourselves. We have all the professors of every tree. We have senior lawyers. Nobody will complain because they're all eating from the post. That's why you increase, you increase all of the judges for five or something million. Meanwhile, minimum wage is thirty thousand. The meanwhile, you, you are paying almost fifty, um, eighty thousand for transport to to work, and you expect someone not to steal in the company is working. We just we are creating monsters. We've not seen anything yet. When the team boss, it will. You know, go boss. You know, go boss, Malik. You, hey, calm down. Drink some water. Water, water. Calm down. You, you all right? Okay, chill. I've got a few minutes. I'm going to take the next call from Mrs. Oboli, but just so we know. <laughs> The, the Buhari administration did something impressive that we could have built on. And that's what the Abia state government has done. The, he unbundled power. So maybe we need to start asking our state governors very, very pertinent questions. Why do we have to pay this much for subsidy if, if every state has had the power to have their own, you know, generate their own power and even be able to send more across to other states? What exactly are we doing? Mr. Boli is joining us right now. Hello, Mr. Boli. I know you're calling from me. Yeah, good doing? afternoon. Hi, how are you? I'm not fine. Mm. Let's see. Mm. I thought they said subsidy was gone. Uh, inside petrol. Mm. You want to make excuse for them, right? This, this energy, this power, this is not uh, petrol. Yes. Okay. Mm. Quit making excuses. So this particular subsidy is different from the one they said it was gone. Yes, the, uh, I think, are you not understanding English? Subsidy for Sub- unavailable source of power. Uh, right? No, like no, they say subsidy for fuel, auntie, is gone. This particular one that they are calling millions or billions of naira, is it available? Is the light available? That's my question. Is the question I'm asking everybody? Mm-hmm. Now you be asking now. So make I start from you. Okay. Calm down. You mm-hmm. say we should calm down. You calm down too. So. <laughs> then. Um, Please, can you help me tell our first lady that right there in Senna Climbs, there are no area boys there. 
So I'll be collecting bad booze money from um, um, cab drivers. And so they make a whole lot there, and they use it to better their lot. So all these things she's saying is not even for us. See, I, I don't know why these people don't even vet what they say before coming out in the opening to say it. Marianne, I'm angry right now, but really I'm trying to calm myself. Please calm yourself. Well, I, I condole with the families of those of our heroes that lost their their fellow um, soldiers. But I just want to say at this time, let's stem the tide. The reprisal attacks on innocent citizens, I don't think it's called for. I understand their grievances, I understand their pain. When two elephants fight, the grass suffers. But please, the army should just have a rethink. There's some people that are dying presently that ought not to be in this quagmire that's happening. So they should please have a rethink and stem the tide. All right. Maria para. I beg, tell your, uh, or tell our president's wife, say, make you know they why not. <laughs> enough is enough. She should start from her own self. Okay. She should help ourselves. How many people has she helped in my vicinity? How can have you know? Day, how you know? will you know how many people she has helped? Eh? Do you know? Have you, have you asked her? Probably I have helped all her village people. I'm just saying. Anyway, we've got 30 seconds. I'm going to go on a quick break. If um, Well, don't forget, we're live on YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. We're also live on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM. We're also on Facebook. We're um, on WhatsApp. Send me a WhatsApp message. You can join the conversation on Twitter. That's X. Use the hashtag hard facts. When I come back, I'd like to hear from you. Also, you can join us via Skype if you are listening to us from outside of the country. Um, yes, join us. We're Nigeria Info FM on Skype. Um, so go ahead, call us, and uh, we'll be able to hear your, you know, your thoughts and your comments. I've got 10 seconds. We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. It's still Hard Facts. It's more than the absence of illness. It's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. But let's delve deeper. Health is the heartbeat of life. It's the rhythm that keeps us moving forward. The pulse that echoes our vitality. It's a symphony of balance and harmony, resonating in every aspect of our existence. Health is a silent conductor, orchestrating the dance between the body and mind. It's the energy that propels us towards our dreams and aspirations. It is the foundation upon which we build our futures. So, what is health to you? Join me, Kofi Bartels, this and every Thursday for Health Thursday, 8 a.m. on the Morning Crossfire as we explore important issues affecting your health. Only on 99.3 Nigeria Info. You are this touch like phone. I've been advised to call him. What's it you the always praise for dear? Don't mind me, Jerry. I've been check something for Google. <laughs> See you the one you need. You the browse Google with this touch like phone. Come see now with MTN Basic Search. Touch that and triple seven one seven hash. Only on MTN Live to check anything for the web without data. Shop shop. <laughs> see now. She you know go like try this innovation powered by MTN. We will give you basic search. Shop shop without data for your phone. This one be say no data, no problem. Just dial star triple seven one seven hash. Only on MTN. And lights. You are listening to your number one station for talk. Your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. The home of entertaining conversations. I personally think Liverpool of last season that lost the title are better. were better. That's my, pers my been personal been. opinion. Somebody who has the virus refused to isolate. That's even attempted murder, in my opinion, because you know how dangerous this virus is, and you refuse to do the right thing. It should be a crime. 99.3. A young man like me, looking for what I will try to myself. Mm. And police are collecting my money. Mm. What do you, what do you mean I will say? I'm not doing that. I have a luxury shop. Your number one station for talk. 99.3. Nigeria Info. Let's talk. There's a reason why over one million people tune into Hard Facts every day. We discuss in-depth stories with sources behind the facts. The Lagos State High Court has convicted, convicted the suspended Square the city cargo has, uh, certificate. So it's never going is away, is it? show with stories for the day. You hear diverse voices and opinions. The housewife was a magician, and if she was moved, she can with the husband knowing that. We should not feel happy because there is nothing so happy about it. Yeah, it's quite pathetic the way the country is going. We distinguish each story accurately with analysis. It's Hard Facts with Marianne Okoli on 99.3 Nigeria Info.
All right, uh, we're back. 14 minutes on the clock. So let's go, let's go, let's go. The big three stories for today. And of course, most importantly, the First Lady's message to you all. This is the big three. Nigerians, we can help each other. The rate we are doing parties and all that going through there, why don't you use the money to help your neighbor until, you know, we can... Your thoughts. Nigerians, we can help. Nigerians, we can help each other. The rate we are doing parties and all that going through there, why don't you use the money to help your neighbor until, you know, we can really get on our feet. So, and those are the things we have to look at. And it's not that government has to begin to give food to everybody and asking, tasking, you know, I, I believe in social development and social investment for people who truly need it, you know. And in the Bible, they even talked about, in the times of Jesus, he said, the poor you will always have in the land. Mm -hmm. So, and it's for people who God has blessed to help the poor. But now you don't even know who are poor. If you don't have ride a car, they will say they are poor. If you don't have the, your own home, they say they are poor. Even all those people saying they are going to Jakba or they go there, what work are you going to do? You know, work that you refuse to do at home, where you have loved ones, you end up going to do that. Even with all their education, they're driving cabs, but they won't drive cabs here. So, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, as lawmakers we want, especially that of the security, I, I want you to really take it to heart and, you know, it's really, really very, very important at this time. Nigeria. Well, that's your first lady, Lagos, Nigeria. Well, she's saying, help your neighbor, eh? Can you drive drive uh, or Kada or Kabu Kabu here? You not drive, but you go to abroad and drive it, eh? You want to jackba? Where are you jackba into? And stay in this your country and let's all suffer together. <laughs> anyway, also, Mr. President has banned completely foreign travels for all ministers and all other appointees, except there's a caveat, by the way. The caveat is if it's mm, very, very important, except it's deemed absolutely necessary. And so my question obviously is, Will they follow this one? Or every other trip all of a sudden will be deemed absolutely necessary. Also, um, <laughs> um, the police and the media are complaining that they've not been able to get access into a Kwama community due to the ongoing military operation. And so I'm asking, how can we ascertain the true um, you know, nature of things in Delta State if the media is unable to cover, if the police in itself is unable to go in there? How can we be telling a one-sided story? As much as we um, feel terrible about what's happened to those soldiers who were killed unnecessarily, we also need to know what the true nature of things are on the ground. But if that is not, we're unable to do that because we're not allowed access, especially we, the media, then something is amiss. Is there something that we, we're not being told? Because it's, it's not adding up. And then, of course, the federal government has suspended subsidy on unavailable e electricity for the past 10 years we've spent billions to blow your mind just for january and february this year we've spent two trillion <laughs> join the conversation 0700 993 993 hello welcome to hard facts good afternoon my sister good afternoon what's your name sir where are you calling from hello good afternoon can you hear me yes i can hear you go ahead Thank sir. You. Yeah, my name is Bia Akimbo. I'm calling from uh, Iba. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. Yes, as for the military, I think uh, they have to take stretch softly. We know what has happened, but with the rate they are going, it's just the vulnerable that will suffer. These are the women, the aged, and the, the, the children. The perpetrators of that act must have uh, disappeared. They can't get them in that community again. So they should take it easy. And that is why we have always said that we don't need the military in our internal security architecture. It is not their job, really. They are just meant for the external. But when we have a very weak police, that is why they are drafted in. And that is why we are appealing to the government to equip the police, to train and retrain them, to be able to meet international standards in this their official job. Mm -hmm. 
when we do that, the military has no business in our internal security system. Mm. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. And as for the first lady, you should realize that we have a lot of graduates that are conductors right here now. Some of them are even riding Okada. Some of the riders of Keke are graduates. You should realize that. Okay. The government needs a lot of empowerment to okay. do. All right, all right. So I have to let you go, sir. I'm so sorry, but thank you very much for your thoughts, okay? We're, we're trying to manage time here, and I have to go to social media to read all the messages that are coming in. Then I'll come back to the phone lines. All right, this one here says, um, hello, good afternoon. Uh, someone asked why God... Um, this is not for me, obviously. Um, this one says, what could have been the reason why the army and the military decided to barricade or ban the governor of Delta State and the police and the media from covering these two communities? Why? I think it's becoming clearer that there's so much that we do we don't know uh, then that was then that which was told uh, or said to have been the reasons why the army were there in the first place. It doesn't look like a land dispute. There's more to it than that. What is it that the military is covering up and doesn't want Nigerians to know? This is no longer a land dispute. It's bigger than that. It must be a battle for oil. Adeboyega, Adedeji sent us that message. Um, this one says, Marianne, there's nothing like the office of the first lady in the constitution, yet she was allocated cars and a huge um I'm sorry, you mean huge funds. Now she's here uh, to form Saint. Now I serve is Gushua Shige Banza. Ralph from Satellite Town. Okay. Um, this one says, the first lady should give the lecture and um, preaching to herself and her husband, the president, not Nigerians. Collins in Um This one says, um, all right, I'm going to read that message because you're being rude to the first lady. Um, this one says, Tinubu said she, he used to drive a cab in the U.S. So first lady should spare me. I will go and drive my cab to may God. Uh, maybe God will hear me someday and I'll become Nigeria's president. Easy call from Ejibo. <laughs> okay. Um, this one says, Marianne, the first lady just wants to trend. That's all. She should just go and tell the senators and the House of Reps to stop collecting huge salaries and do voluntary work per sitting allowance if she has the guts as first lady. Mrs. Wakama, thank you. Um, this is from Bosede in Ikorodu, who's saying, um, <laughs> good afternoon, abroad has security, good health, good transportation system, and good salary. Leave them alone, no, Madam First Lady. Let them jack by if they have the opportunity. Okay, okay. Uh, this one says, uh, let me see. Ban a foreign trip. Hmm. The only problem is that when Asiwaju wants to travel, he will still carry everybody along. Anyway, it's a good move. If utilized well, we'll... Because we have a knack for disregarding protocols and rules of law in this country. Okay, Ulushoga, thank you. This one says, Marianne, Nigerian government is embezzling our money through energy. Uh, that money they claim they spent is enough to give steady light to the entire country. Concerning the army killing innocent citizens in Delta, uh, the army is wiping the villages. If not, why restrict journalists from in entering and covering what's going on? Well, we also can't sit here and assume that they're wiping because that's a tough term to use. I also don't want to believe that the anima, the, the, the army, I beg your pardon, will be so horrible enough to wipe, wipe communities because they're searching for perpetrators of violence. So they just, you know, literally wipe out a whole community. I don't want to believe that. I really don't want to believe that. All right, this one says, if the first lady should help, what, tell us to help one another, I want to ask if we're running a religious kind of government, if she condemns Nigerians going to do dirty jobs abroad, why doesn't she condemn her children who studied and treat and are treated abroad? She did do from Ikotun. She said, "Are there not good hospitals here and schools?" If you ask me. All right, let's go take those Skype calls. Call us when Nigeria Info FM on Skype. If you're listening to us um, from outside of the country, we're ready to take your calls. Hello. Hello, Miriam. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. What's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? My name is Olu Muiwa, calling from Aja. Muiwa, go ahead, please. Um, two years ago, you know, Kwanja, where I work, there's a problem between Omunile and Ibaya. Mm -hmm. So and Ibaya knows who is who in the barrack, and he brought the soldier. I was there with the Omunile. And you know what those soldiers said? They said, we are coming here not to fight, though. We come here to key. So if you don't give those land back, we come here to keep people, not to fight. So what is my point? We are only hearing one side of the stories. 
we are even the media are not have access to the other side of the story and it's painful so if anybody is saying anything anywhere now we should not call them fake news because the nigeria military does not allow other information in okay. conclusion i just want to tell those nigeria that want military to come back that maybe they were not born during the time of Abasha and Babangida. Okay, I need to let you go. Thank you very much for calling. Let's go to Skype. Ambassador Abiola is calling us via Skype. Hello, Ambassador Abiola. Where are you calling us from? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Is it your radio that I can hear? I can hear your radio. Can you turn it off? Yeah, I'm off. I'm off it now. All right, go ahead. Where are you calling us from? Yeah, I'm Abiola. Um, um, you know, uh, the first lady, I uh, mean, um, let, let's agree she has. And these are the poor that you deliberately made because of government policy, because of government wickedness, because of corruption, because of evil our leaders are doing to us. Mm-hmm. You think people want to leave Nigeria? You think people want to come to this cold? You think people want to leave the country and, and be hustling here? Let me give you an example, my sister. Even if you are a cab driver here, I'm not going to change anything in my car. For In fact, for one year, I may not change anything in my car. But in Nigeria, if you are doing, let's say even if you are doing Uber, you will be going back to a mechanic to change your, if you are not changing truck absorber today, you are changing something in the car because of the bad road. If these people don't know what to say, I think sometimes they should learn to keep quiet and just be doing their elabe or be doing their stealing and just leave us alone with all this nonsense they are talking about. Because we, can, we cannot just sit down here and people are, are gaslighting us. They are not doing what they ought to do. They are gaslighting us to wanting us to believe that we are, we are the one that is wrong. The poor, the Bible is talking about, is it the one that is being... Everybody, even economically... Everybody cannot be rich in, 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 any, in any country. But these are the poor we are making because of our policy. Somebody will just sit and say, I should carry my money that I want to use to bury my um, father. And because there is a poor person, I should leave my mo- father or my mother in the mortuary okay. and distribute the money among the poor. Abiola, I can, t- I can tell that you're pained by, by, by this statement by the First Lady, but thank you so much. Our time is far spent. I need and to take Thank you, my sister. Thank Best you very sister. much for calling. Uh, for those of you who are we trying know. to call us via Skype, go ahead and call us. We'd like to hear from you. I'm going back to the phone lines, and then, of course, I'll return to social media. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Yeah, Afian Lady, good afternoon. Hey, Mr. Chris, how are you doing? Fine, thank you very much. For the military, I said it the other day. They dined with, with the politicians. Instead of using long spoon, no. Today, look at where they find themselves. I hear some of us, oh, police, police. Which police? Come to the estate here. You go here, one or two estates. Each building will see four, five, six policemen. Guiding one man, all in the name of uh, elite, or how did they call them? Hello, action lady. I'm listening. Then you, you, you need to go. Although I'm not supporting uh, what those guys did, I always say after effect, will tell in whatever one do. Those boys that commit this havoc, they are nowhere to be found. And people are begging the soldiers. They should stop begging them. Let them go and level up the old place, take over the land and build their barracks or whatever. In the first place, it's not their duty. Because of politics, they go in there and one or two stupid boys decide to do this thing. Now everybody is suffering it. You don't want pressmen to go there. Like some of his callers said, how will we hear the story of the other side of it? I know those boys did the wrong thing. For God's sake, the other day they decide they go to Abia, Imuolo, uh, destroy everything, kill people. Only the name of uh, military because they are dining with the politicians. They should stop begging them. Let them go and level up the old village. No, no, no. Take it Thank easy. You. Take it easy. I totally feel your pain. I know that those are your people. Um, but it's a tough time, actually, um, for both the wives and family members of those officers that were killed brutally, as it is a tough time for the family members and the people in those communities who are under siege. It's a very, very sensitive issue. And really... The only way we can tell the true state of things is if the media are allowed to cover it. But if they're shielded away from it, then it gives us room to continue to speculate. And speculation could lead to all kinds of things. 
that might not necessarily be true. So maybe it's time for us to appeal to the sensibilities of those army officials who are in that area to reconsider. Because no one wants chaos. We don't even want it to deteriorate than what it is already. But let me take a few more calls. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, Miriam. Good afternoon. Good Francis afternoon. Go ahead, Francis. Yeah, um, this is the toughest moment in, the, in our country. You know, very, very tough times. And uh, I'm appealing for all Nigerians to just calm down. And what happened in, uh, in uh, Delta State, right? I want a to army. They should tamper justice with me and also allow the media to do their work. There's no point of you resisting the media from giving us the real story. And you are making us not to believe the reports. We are only hearing the one side of the story, being that the military has killed. And what, of what happened to the civilian over there? Hey, yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for calling. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Mary, I'm my own baby. Mm, this one that is adopting me as baby. I'm old though, but go ahead. You are not old. You are my baby. This is Mr. Frank. Ha, ah, Mr. Frank. Hmm. I don't want to fight with that blessing, but it's okay. Go ahead. No, you are doing the father blessing. Just believe her. She will not do anything. <laughs> Yes, ma. Hey, go ahead. I'm in charge. Mm, what gonna... I said that will happen. <laughs> yes. Okay. Very on. Mm-hmm. Can the first lady tell us how much is a car in abroad? How much is a car in Nigeria today? How much is a liter of fuel in abroad? How much is a liter of fuel here in Nigeria today? Can you make it? Up to these Uber drivers or kind of drivers one day, just bring out uh, like 30 minutes. If you are an Uber driver, you will call. And let these people tell you what they are passing through, through the hands of the VIO, road safety, and um, Amburu, last man. And the, and the other local government people that doesn't wear uniform, um, hold dogs, go slow, traffic. Let them tell you. But uh, if you come inside this inside this Nigeria very well, you will see graduates, graduates that are driving on Canada. After the end of the day, you will not see a drive in their pocket. And you and this woman wants people to remain here in poverty. The only people they know, he said she said that if a man doesn't have a house of his own, he is poor. If they doesn't have car of their own, they are poor. So that means everything is going all right here, I mean. God will judge her by the wash of her mouth. Ah, I think it is enough. I'm telling mm -mm, you what mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. There's no need for that. There is absolutely no need for that. Godwin is calling us from Lacroix. Mm -hmm. Hello, Godwin. Godwin, you're in a very noisy place. I can barely make out your voice. Please. Yes, I'm stepping up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My third, the Miriam. Yes. The the, the 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 main one in the town. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yes, I'll take that. Uh, it's unfortunate the way Amana, our Nigerian politicians, they are taking Nigerian for. Now, looking and hearing from what the first lady has. Oh, Godwin, are you still it's there? Unfortunate. Yeah. Hello? Yes, go ahead. I lost you for a second. Okay, it's unfortunate. With the kind of comparison, both Bablita and the uh, foreign countries, do they do to Nigerians what the government of those foreign people, what they do to their citizens? Do they, in their own offices, he, she has, was a, a senator for how many years? So she showed to the people in her constituency the benefits of that office, the people she was representing. What was she, what, what, what she representing you? Of, what, 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 well, hold on, hold on, hold on, jo God, John, yes. uh, Godwin. There are people that she represented. You and I, I don't think we, he, she, we, she represented us, so we can't really tell 
if you know she represented them well or not. So I don't want you to make those speculations. Do you understand well, me? Well, let's representation aside. She can grant seeing what is happening. She must be hearing day to day what is happening in this country to ordinary Nigerians. Yeah. What impact has she used her position to give to Nigerians today? This electricity, when we talk of electricity and the subsidy, the fuel owed, the implication of fuel subsidy is still burning every person, ordinary Nigerians today to the poor marrow. And we have not gone out of that. Okay. They are going for that. Godwin. The car and the car that the senator and the House of Assembly that is two hundred uh, million for them. She is in that office. Why did she allow that to be? Okay. When God, and I have to let you go. You've done two minutes. Thank you very much for calling, and I'm being very, very nice. Uh, let me go to WhatsApp again uh, because there's so many messages. Someone says two problems, please. If we allow the government to receive to remove subsidy from energy now, they'll soon come back and tell us they need to remove subsidy on the road from food and from every purchase that Nigerians make. Mm. Uh, number two, he says, why take subsidy, which all Nigerians benefited from, transport fare, which was lower there by making prices of goods um, also remain rel relatively low? Why take it away and now use money to produce procure palliatives, which people hardly have access to? Good questions that you're asking. Hmm. This one's from Abe in Ikorudu, and he says, uh, Marianne, tell Mrs. Tinubu that many Nigerians abroad are not there because they're happy with the dirty and shameful jobs, but they are there because of the terrible state of our currency. What they get over there are not enough to build or buy properties there, but same can be uh, used to do big things here. The day our currency um, regains its power, many won't run abroad. Tell her, her husband, and other politicians to stop collecting humongous allowances and salaries, running costs, and wicked remunerations. Okay. All right. Uh, this one says, um, <laughs> the first lady is in trouble to do. Uh, please tell our first lady that doing odd jobs overseas is better than a manager in Nigeria. No Agbarus will disturb you driving taxi over here. Okay, okay. Uh, this one says, Mr. President's ban on uh, publicly sponsored trips abroad is a welcome development only if he does so in practice and not in principle. The ban period should be extended until the economy is fully recovered. The masses are yet to be convinced. That Mr. President uh, has the proof uh, in that the proof is in the pudding, uh, the eating of the pudding. Act now or never in your limited tenor. Chisco. Okay. This one says, um, Ademola from Abelkota says, Sincerely, our first lady has spoken. She can no longer identify the poor, uh, poor one amongst us. This is a very good one. God will speak for the poor, but she claims initially that they did not need our money to survive as president and wife. Okay. Still on WhatsApp, <laughs> someone says the army is preventing people and the media from accessing the town because there's more to the issue than meets the eye. Francis in Ejigbo. Um, this one here says the first lady should mention um, how many companies she set up for employment of youth. No light at Ibeju. Kinde from Ibeju. <laughs> Kinde two point something, two trillion has already gone. January and February. I'm hoping that you'd have called me to say we have light or we have had light some months or some weeks. You mean there's no light? And we spent $2 trillion already subsidizing light that is not available. I did promise I was going to tell you guys something. There's a tactic for all the distribution companies. And I put it to all of them. A code distribution, whether it's a Portacot distribution, whether it's Calabar distribution, they're all the same. You can stay the whole time there's no light. They wait. When it's time to, for them to do that whole, let's check your bill, they will give you light. As soon as they finish checking the bills, the light goes again. Correct me if I'm wrong. Prince Wyatt is calling us from a mode of thing. Hello, Prince Wyatt. I don't stay for two minutes. Ah, you see, that subsidy I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. You see, is that this subsidy they were talking about is not a that thing where they do this people this year. Uh, not part of this uh, it now. Mm. I mean, they are not competent you because they refuse to give up prepaid meter. Mm. If you don't give me like, if I'm missing prepaid meter, I think it's you that you, that you lose at the end of the day. Exactly. But now they give somebody an estimated B. You give a flight 40,000, 50,000. Where are we going to get that money? And the, I know they are three. This is part of corruption I'm starting against. I want to have the federal government. I don't know that agreement they signed that 2013, 2014. Because these people that handle this, they reduce the competent hand now that can give an exact prepaid meter. 
Uh, 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 even if they give it, do you think that it's, it's a competent hand that's the problem? Or it's just our system that's flawed. Number one, if they, are, if they have the resources, why can't they give an exact to save meter? Now give every home to pay meter. I think it will get better. Now they are cheating us. Now we have to okay, federal government to prepare subsidy, and we are still giving some estimate be that more than be drunk expectation. Are they not cheating us? Is it not corruption? Mm. Okay. okay, now they are generating. They are generating this. Thing. We are now bubbling and bubbling between four thousand, three thousand megawatts. At the end of the day, they will power collapse. And you are talking about gas. Who's supposed to provide gas? You see, free government or the organization that handles this project. Mm. Prince Wyatt. We'll find it for the customer. That's what I'm saying. All, the, all these questions we need to ask our leaders. Well, Unfortunately, okay, I can't I, answer I, them. Help, help, help me ask Asuro. To be the answer. You have an intermediate between the Asuro and with Matt. Okay. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Thank you very much, Prince Wyatt, for calling. I've got three minutes on the clock and I want to read. Some more of your messages. Let me go to Facebook Live because um, I want to make sure that everyone's carried along, including those who are on Twitter. That's formerly X. Ibilade says, we must point out one important thing in the Delta killings. It's the fact that the news is coming from the army alone. Let those speak who have seen with their eyes. What must also hear, I'm sure you're saying, we must also hear from the people of the affected communities. There must be an eyewitness among them. Um, Abdul Rafiu here says, uh, Madam Tidibu should know living in Africa is like living in hell because most African leaders fail to make their own grasses greener. That's why people, both old and young ones, are doing jackpot thing and don't see jackpot anytime. And don't and I don't see jackpot stopping anytime soon. Okay, um, Rafiu, because your message is very long, I can't read everything, so I'm just going to skip it and go someplace else. Someone says 2.3 uh, trillion, I beg your pardon, paid on subsidy on electricity for two months. Incredible. Can this country ever be developed the way politicians run affairs of this country? Uh, I think that we're left to answer that question for ourselves. And then what we want to do with the answer is totally up to us. This one says the first lady should advise her husband not to spend our money to travel abroad for treatment and let such money be used to fund hospitals here. Um, well, Madame Tinubu should know that living in Africa is... I think I've read that message on Facebook, Abdul Rafiu. Um, this one says, um, she's calling me from Canada. Call me again. Call me again. I haven't seen your message. Call me again. Um, this one says, uh, uh, I believe we don't forgive people uh, because they... D that message... Is this message from me? Okay, this one says, we now have Gaza in Delta State uh, as the community is being occupied, I'm sure, by the army. That's what you mean. Um, this one says, Remy Tinubu should have told us how far her husband, uh, her husband's administration has done well in the area of insecurity that would enable farmers to go to farm, how many school children and students have been released, how industries have been revamped. Instead of her showing her own patriotism, unkindness, unloving mind to us, uh, they said she's a pastor. And who, uh, okay, so what exactly does that have to do with anything? Stay on the issue, sir. All right, thank you. Um, this one says, um, Tinubu's wife is telling us that this thing is to distract us from the budget padding, which should be the major issue right now. Uh, it's you who wants to be distracted now. Um, this one says, why is no one making reference to the video released by a young man about the crisis in Delta State? Then uh, the, first, um, should, the first lady should ask her husband, uh, to make this country comfortable, so would stop traveling abroad. Ibinabo from our Papa. I can read a few more messages because my time is almost gone. Uh, this one says, I don't think Mrs. Tinubu realizes. Um, sorry, talk about what does that mean? Um, this one says, uh, there's, no innocent, there's no way innocent citizens will not go with the act of carnage that is displayed in Delta. Innocent citizens will definitely go to go with it. Um, but they should just please not go overboard. Why couldn't the killer kill conventionally, but cutting heads off, gouging out stomachs is an act of terror and should be treated like <laughs> Hamas. You blend this Hamas. Samuel from OPIC. I've got to go. Lagos, when we come back on the other side of the clock, we'll be going to Haiti. Gang wars and violence leading to the president running away. There's a lot happening in Haiti, and we'll be joined by a guest via Zoom to talk about it. Stay with us. Nigerians come first for the best of talk. My wife beats 
99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's